Hi everyone, this is Carmen Alana Tibbetts and I am joining you from the Agoja Art Studio. I thought I would take a few minutes to talk about upcoming projects for 2021. In a previous post, I mentioned that I wanted to do something new for the upcoming year, and that was focus on plants because plants don't get enough love, right? So what I have decided to do is 20 figures for the year and I'm gonna choose 10 of the plants and I'm gonna have you choose 10 of the plants. So the plan is to make um, the figures based on this body plan, which is one of my smaller dolls. And so it has a pretty simple body, straightforward. And I don't know if I've done too many videos on this body, but it's basically the same thing that I usually do, just smaller. So it has the typical button joints, um, just everything on a smaller scale, and then I have a very simple jacket that I use for these smaller figures. So obviously the head is going to be different. We're not going to have a mammal head, and we'll be talking about what we're going to be doing for some variation for some of these body parts, but they're all going to be small. And the other idea that I had was that I would go ahead and offer these patterns then for sale in the future, because so far I only have one pattern for sale, and that's jackrabbit which is pretty popular and i thought well you know let's let's do something for the plants so it's going to be the basic body plan and then whatever embellishments i use to uh, call that plant species to life so there may be some variations in terms of what i have on the pattern and what i make on my doll for sale but we'll talk about that in the future so all of the 2020 dolls are going to be this smaller scale okay so they're going to be plants so obviously plants don't have arms and hands and feet. So there will probably be some differences in terms of the things that I do to that basic body. And we'll be talking about that in the future when we're talking about design. So I thought with this video, I would talk about the 10 species that I have chosen. And they're kind of my top 10 plants in no particular order. And some of them are fairly well known, but some of them um, you might not have ever seen. And, and you know, it's, that's part of the thing, right? To learn something new. So my criteria was uh, that it has to be something native to Arizona and New Mexico. And for you guys, I'm going to broaden it out a little bit, which I didn't do for me, and I, I should have, and I'll explain that in a minute. It can also be native to Sonora and Chihuahua, two states in northern Mexico. So that would give you some options in terms of plants that are native to the Sonoran Desert and the Chihuahuan Desert. So what I'm hoping for is something a little bit different. I want you to think about some plants that maybe don't get enough appreciation, um, but maybe you have something that's fairly common that you really love. Now, I know that there are lots of plants that are native to these areas that are found outside of those four states or the two deserts, and that's okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all of the suggestions that you provide, and I will choose 10 that have a diversity of shapes and colors and different forms so that we can talk about different aspects of the design process and how we want to um, call something to life in terms of making uh, a figure in cloth. Okay, so my 10 choices are, uh, first of all, the Arizona sycamore. This is one of the iconic trees of the riparian zones in the southwest. A lot of people think of the cottonwood, which is, of course, a very beautiful tree, but I really like sycamores. They have beautiful white bark and lovely little seed heads and something that a lot of people don't realize, but they have a very sweet, spicy perfume. And certain times of the year, you walk into a riparian area and you just smell this fresh, sweet scent. And I just love that. So uh, choice number one, Arizona sycamore. The second choice is the New Mexico thistle. And if you just look at it, it looks like any old thistle. And I thought I would choose this because thistles don't get enough appreciation. There's this widespread idea that they are weeds and that you have to get rid of them. But I really like them. I think that the flower shape is beautiful, the color is beautiful, and the bees love them. And one of the sad things is that all of the native thistles uh, are having trouble because this idea that thistles are bad, you have to get rid of them, they're all the non-natives. There's this big push to just get rid of everything, and a lot of the natives are having a hard time because they are destroyed along with the non-natives. So choice number two uh, is the New Mexico thistle. 
So my third choice is the organ pipe cactus. And this is where I got myself when I said I wanted things to be native to Arizona and New Mexico because I wanted to choose the cardon, which is, oh, it's my favorite cactus. It's huge. If you have been to Arizona, Southern Arizona, you have seen the saguaro, which is a massive cactus. It's the, the classic sort of cartoony thing. It's this big thing with the arms. Cardone is even bigger. So it has more arms and they are larger and they form closer down to the ground. And these are, I think, I'll check. I think they're the biggest cactus in the world and they are just absolutely beautiful. So that is in Sonora. <laughs> so I couldn't choose that one. So I chose next best, which is the organ pipe cactus, which is found the northern part of its range is in southern Arizona. And it's another big multi-branching cactus. It's just really interesting, beautiful, and huge. So that's number three. Number four is the creosote bush. Now the creosote bush is interesting because it's found throughout the arid regions of North and South America. Each particular desert has its own genetic form. So the creosote bush in New Mexico is completely different from the creosote bush in the Sonoran Desert. And they have different numbers of chromosomes. To me, the creosote bush is one of the iconic shrubs and it doesn't look like much. It's kind of this grayish green, it always looks kind of sad shrub. Uh, but what is fantastic about it that a lot of people from outside of the Southwest don't realize is that when it rains, that really sweet perfume that often floats out of, out of the desert is because of the volatile compounds in the leaves of the creosote bush. So to me, the creosote bush smells like rain. And I just had to include that as a choice. My next choice is another widespread species, and I just love it because it is absolutely beautiful. And it's called the eyelash grass, or more commonly blue grandma. Ranchers like it because it's a good forage grass for all kinds of grazers. And there's a variety of different grandmas found in the grasslands of North America. And this one I like because of those beautiful little seed heads that look just like eyelashes. And I have a whole bunch of it planted in the front yard of my house in New Mexico. And one of my favorite things is frosty mornings, you go out and all of those sweet little eyelashes are covered with frost and it's all sparkly and beautiful. And it looks like a whole bunch of little fairy eyelashes, which is, which is just so delicate and wonderful. So eyelash grass is, I think, number five. So number six is kind of a funny one. It always makes me laugh. And one of the common names is coyote gourd. It has a lot of names. And this is a native squash, you can think of it that way. Um, it's in the melon family and it is a super tough and when the melons are ripe, kind of smelly, <laughs> uh, little, little gourd. And these plants have really interesting leaves. So they're big vines. You think about a pumpkin vine or a squash vine or something like that. And the leaves are much more triangular and there's all these branches that come out and it spreads out on the ground and it is an incredibly tough plant. I grew up next to a ditch uh, south of Albuquerque and the gourds would grow on the ditch banks and the plants have this huge taproot that is almost impossible to get rid of because there's always little parts. I went to school at New Mexico State University and I worked out kind of out in one of the biology annexes. And I remember the groundskeepers, they had this literally years long battle with this one coyote gourd plant that they could not kill. It was so tough. They did all kinds of things to it. They tried chopping it, they tried spraying it, they tried burning it, and it always came back with these arms and vines that were, you know, 20, 30, 50 feet long and all of the little gourds, which are about the size of, I guess, an orange or your fist. And they're just a lot of fun. I like them a lot. When I was a kid, uh, we would wait until, you know, they were kind of big and then they're rock hard and throw them at each other, which was not so nice, I guess. But I have fond memories of the coyote gourd. <laughs> so next choice is the pinon. And this is, again, another one of the iconic plants of the Southwest. And if you're driving along, one of the common types of vegetation is named partly after the pinon, the pinon juniper association. So they are smaller pine trees, 
and they have kind of a, a rounded shape and they're always kind of scrubby looking and everyone is a little bit different and they have a lot of character and I just love pinions, the plants and of course the pinion nuts, which are absolutely fantastic. And um, they have to be harvested by hand. They are just superb and very expensive these days because there's fewer and fewer pinions and more and more people. So anyway, you got to love those pinions. Um, next on the list is a plant that I had never seen until a few years back. And I was uh, hiking along the Gila River with my sister and I saw the seed head of this plant and I was like oh what is that and she said oh well that's blah 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 and it only grows in pure sand so we were walking along the Gila River and there are these huge deep sand banks and this plant had seed heads that were you know kind of like a snowball or something and they had this just incredibly complex geometric papery it was beautiful it was delicate and I forgot the name and I've been texting her. And so we figured out it's the sand puff, which is the perfect name for it. And, you know, you never see things like this or when you do, you just kind of look at it and you're like, huh, you know, that's interesting. And I just thought it was so beautiful. And why don't we have things like this in the garden? Well, it's because they are highly specialized plants that glow, grow in very particular areas. So that's why I've chosen the sand puff. It's beautiful and we need to see more sand puffs in the world. <laughs> okay, next on the list is another cactus, the claret cup. And this is a sort of a, a bunching cactus. You can see them in little clumps. They're only about so high and um, they reproduce by seeds, but also by growing offsets. So it's one of those beautifully flowered cacti that a lot of people like is that the flowers are just brilliant and you can either see these rich reds or dark fuchsia pinks and they're just absolutely beautiful and each flower only lasts a day and the blooming period is about a week or so um, so when you see them in the desert it's just like wow that is fantastic because usually the desert is pretty blah in terms of color <laughs> so it's nice to see those little sparks so the claret cup is also interesting because it's very very spiky and I thought that would be an interesting challenge from an artistic point of view. How do you get that spikiness translated into cloth? So last on the list is the Palo Verde tree, which is a very elegant, small tree native to the Sonoran Desert. Um, it is a green barked tree and it has very, very tiny leaves. Usually there's a couple different species and the plant photosynthesizes from the bark. So it has a very different leaf and bark situation going on there compared to say the Arizona sycamore. So I thought it would be interesting to do those both in terms of the colors because they're different colors, but also in terms of um, getting the idea of treeness, but the differences in those two different kinds of plants. So that is my list of 10. I'm gonna throw it out to you and I'd like to hear what your suggestions are. I have received a few already. So what I'm going to do is put out the list um, that I have. I'll be looking at the plants that you get and I'm going to look at that list and I'm going to choose things that have a diversity in form and texture and color so that we can have some artistic challenges in the future. So uh, I'm going to give it about a month so you can respond comments to the video or you can throw me an email. Um, Tell me the common name and if you've got it, the scientific name, because sometimes the common name can apply to different plants. So, you know, just go on to Wikipedia there and uh, or, or Google or whatever and try and figure out which plant it is that you actually mean. So let me know and I will be looking forward to those suggestions. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye bye.